Hey guys! So later this year, I'm going to be visiting Nepal, and before I go, I need to apply for a tourist visa. So I thought I would take this opportunity to show you guys how to apply for a tourist visa online. A tourist visa is a sticker or a stamp that temporary visitors will get in their passports um, when they travel overseas for business or pleasure. Usually you need to apply for a visa before you travel to a country, but some places will let you get one upon arrival at the airport, and it's much cheaper than if you were to get the visa online or at an embassy or consulate. Nepal is one of those countries that will let you get a visa upon arrival at the airport, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna pretend that that's not true, and I would show you how I would normally apply for a visa online. It is more expensive to apply for a visa online or through an embassy or a consulate, but I'm willing to pay the extra money because it means less paperwork on my end. So let's get started, shall we? All right, guys, the first thing you're going to do is go to visahq.com, and from the homepage, you'll see this travel visa requirements area. And from there, you're going to select your country of citizenship as well as the country that you're traveling to. You'll notice that the United States of America is automatically pre-selected, but it doesn't matter if you're from somewhere else. You can choose whatever country uh, you are from, and then you're going to select the country that you're traveling to. So I'm just going to select um, Nepal that's where I am going and it will automatically redirect you to the page that will let you know whether or not you need a tourist visa and right here on the left you can see I do in fact need a tourist visa for Nepal uh, if you don't need a tourist visa for the country you're going to the text will be in green and you won't have to take any further steps um, you are already good to go um, but if you do need a tourist visa I'm just going to take you through quickly how to apply online um, so you'll see for the Nepal visa, I need to fill in the application online and print it out and send it to Visa HQ, who will then submit it to the Embassy of Nepal in Washington, D.C. Um, and I also need to send them my passport and one passport type photograph. Um, now, it's important to send like your actual passport and not just a copy of the first page of your passport because they're going to stick the... Um, Nepal visa sticker onto one of your visa pages in the passport so you need to send um, your actual passport for them to complete your application. And then down here um, we have different lengths of stay um, and visa validity. Uh, since I am going to Nepal for about three weeks I need to apply for the one month visa. Um, it's good for multiple entries into Nepal um, up to one month. Um, you'll see the total cost is $119 and the processing time is four to five business days. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on apply online. All right, so from this first page of the application form, you're going to enter your email address, and this will be the email you use to create an account with Visa HQ. So that way at the end, you'll be able to log in and check the status of your application, uh, be able to ask any questions, or if need be, you can cancel your application. Uh, and then you're going to enter your first name, your last name, and middle name as it appears on your passport. Uh, fill in your gender, your country of citizenship or residency, your birthday, your place of birth, and your home address, the one that's listed in your passport. Uh, if you need your passport shipped back to a different address, you'll be able to fill that information out on a later page. And then your employment status, and then all of your passport information, including your passport number, uh, the country it was issued in, the date of issue, and the expiration date. Um, if you don't have your passport with you, you can fill this information out later, but it is very important, and they do need that information eventually, so be sure to have your passport on hand. You can also apply for any notifications, so uh, any updates about your uh, visa status, um, exceptions and alerts, uh, and visa H discounts um, for future travel visa purchases. Um, you can give them your phone number, but I don't recommend it. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and hit save and continue and it'll take you to the next page of the application. All right, and then on the next page of the application, um, you're going to select this first drop dropdown um, and you'll see a tourist visa or business visa option. For this, I'm just gonna select tourist visa because I'm not going to Nepal for business. Um, and then your visa validity, depending on how long you're going to be staying in the country you're going to, um, you'll have options for 15 days, 60 days, 90 days, or 30 days, depending on where you're going. Like I said in the beginning, I'm going to Nepal for about three weeks, so I need to get the 30-day visa. And this will allow me to stay in Nepal for up to 30 days, and it has multiple entry guarantee. 
And then you'll see processing time is four to five business days. There's only one option, so that's no problem. And then you'll need to enter your dates of travel. So for me, I'm going to be going to Nepal um, in November. So from November 23rd to December 10th, that sounds good. And then the purpose of your visit, you have options for tourism, business, official, private visit, work, and journalism. I am going for tourism. Uh, and then the purpose of your visit, you explain in detail, just briefly say what you're going to be doing in Nepal. Uh, I am going for a Habitat for Humanity trip, so I'm just going to go ahead and enter that. Uh, have you ever visited this country before? Yes or no? I haven't. Uh, if former citizen, when and where emigrated? So if I was a former citizen of Nepal, where and when have I emigrated from Nepal? Uh, address of stay in Nepal. This is usually a common question no matter where you're going. They want to know the name and the address of the place that you're staying. If you don't have a hotel yet, it's okay. You can just Google a random hotel in the country you're going to and put it in. Um, they usually don't check it, but when you are filling out the customs form on the plane before landing, um, you can fill in the proper address and name of the place that you're staying. Um, but for now, I am just going to put cool hotel. And then you also have the option for an extra $30 to register your trip with the U.S. Embassy in Nepal, yes or no. Um, this is good to uh, notify the embassy that you're going to be in the country on these dates and should something go wrong, if there's a natural disaster or some kind of emergency and you need to be evacuated, the U.S. Embassy can provide some assistance. Um, that's up to you whether you want to do that or not. I'm going to say no for mine and then go ahead and hit save and continue. All right, and then on this next page is going to give you some shipping options. The first drop down is going to be um, the shipping that you want to pay for. So you can either pay for return shipping only, shipping both ways, um, a prepaid self-addressed mailer, or the local pickup in Washington, D.C., which is free. Um, again, like I said in the beginning of the video, Visa HQ is going to submit the application to the Embassy of Nepal in Washington, D.C., and you have the option of going to pick it up there if you don't want it mailed back. Um, but because I don't live in Washington, D.C., I can't select that option, so I am just going to go ahead and say return shipping only. And then you're going to select your shipping address, which you can select the address that you entered in the beginning of your application, or you can select to have it shipped to a different address. And then shipping options from Visa HQ, um, you have second day delivery, standard overnight, priority overnight, and first overnight. It depends on how quickly you need your passport back. Um, but because I'm not going until November, I'm just going to go ahead and say second delivery, that's fine. And again, the quicker you need it back, the more expensive it becomes. Obviously, first overnight is $64, um, but second day delivery is only $21. And you can see my total updated to $140, so it does get pricey pretty quick, but again, since Visa HQ is taking care of all the paperwork for me, um, I'm willing to pay a little bit more. And then the last option is to whether or not you want a signature upon delivery. Um, if you don't want a, uh, a signature, or if you don't require a signature, they will often leave the passport in the mailbox or on the porch, um, and it's a bit unsafe, especially because you know you need your passport to travel anywhere, and if it's left in your mailbox, it's easier to steal. So I would always say direct signature requires that way, whether you're home or someone you trust is home, they can sign for it and um, you, know, you can trust that you got your passport back safely. All right, and go ahead and click continue. All right, and then you have uh, the option for Visa HQ to print out your passport type photo for you. You can just send them a digital copy of your passport photo and they'll print it out for you and submit it along with your visa application. Um, but because I already have uh, my passport photo printed, I don't need this optional service, so I can just go ahead and skip it. But uh, for those of you who are in a rush um, to get your visa and you don't have time to maybe go and print out uh, a passport photo, this might be a good option for you. Otherwise, um, I would suggest either doing it at home or at your local drugstore. Uh, so if you don't need this option, go ahead and just press continue. All right, and here is the final page where you're going to be paying um, for your application. You'll see your name, um, the type of visa that you uh, ordered. So I have multiple entry tourist visa to Nepal. 
um, and then your delivery. So mine is FedEx second day delivery. Um, and you can see my final total is 144. Um, and then you're just going to go ahead and enter your credit card information and your billing address and submit your order. And you'll be prompted to create an account with Visa HQ, like I said, um, to be able to follow up with your Visa application status um, and ask any questions or cancel your application if need be. And after you submit your order, Visa HQ will be in contact with you to let you know um, the status of your application and when it is being shipped back out to you. And don't forget to send them your passport and your passport type photograph along with the printed version of your application so that they can go ahead and get that started for you. Um, and that's it. You're finished. If you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye-bye.